Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Jean-Marc Lim and joining me today is Philip Marangella, Chief Marketing Officer at Edge Connects, and Lee Kirby, Chairman and Co-Founder of Salute Mission Critical. Um, Philip and Lee, thanks so much for joining us. Um, we spoke earlier this year, uh, we had very interesting chats um, with both of you, especially about Edge Connects and also what Salute is doing, uh, especially throughout the COVID crisis. Um, but a lot has really changed um, of, of, across both businesses. Um, I mean, give us a quick just overview of what's been happening over the last five months. Uh, maybe, Philip, would you like to, to go ahead? Um, and I think India is probably one of the biggest <laughs> things that has happened as well. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, first off, great to see you again, Zhao, and, and good to uh, be on with you again, Lee. Uh, of course, you're in a much nicer confines out in the Pacific Northwest. Um, so love the, love the, the real backdrop that you have there. Um, look, as you said, Zhao, it's been a busy year, um, certainly. Um, we announced our joint venture in India with uh, the Adani uh, group. So uh, informed Adani Connects to build out kind of a national platform of data centers, uh, sustainable as well, leveraging uh, Adani's fantastic kind of solar and green energy platform to, to support those facilities. Um, just a few weeks ago, we did an acquisition in Israel. Um, and so, you know, adding a, another uh, dot on the map there, uh, Barcelona, um, and then a myriad of expansions in a lot of the markets where we already are in, in South America and uh, in Europe and, and uh, obviously North America. And we look to continue that, right? So stay tuned. <laughs> It's uh, we, we have uh, much more expansions coming down the pipe as well. So all driven by kind of our customers um, and, and their need to go push their edge further, further afield globally. Um, and so it's it's certainly been a, a wild uh, past uh, 12 months. You've definitely achieved a lot of milestones. And um, Lee, I mean, you, I got duped by your virtual background, not virtual, by your real background, which I thought was virtual until very late in the call. <laughs> um, but you've, you've been equally very busy as well um, since we last spoke, um, and things have changed a lot um, as the crisis progressed as well. So tell us a little about what Salute has been up to um, in the last five, six months. You bet. Thanks for having me on. It's always fun. But I, it, like Philip said, it's been very busy. We've opened up our operations in Poland and the expansion seems to be the theme of the game. Uh, this industry is growing at a rate that I've, I, I didn't think was sustainable, but that was 10 years ago. And I think it's got another 10 to 20 years at this rate. And looking at the ex expansion of the sites that we currently manage, as well as new sites, and we move into new countries, it's just exciting all over the board to help us with that growth. You probably saw the announcement a few months ago, we brought on a capital partner and we're really stoked with that because LLR has a reputation and a proven track record of helping take companies from where we're at to where we want to be. Because while we brag about having over 500 employees now, we'd actually like to move that decimal because we think the social impact we can have with that is monumental. And our veterans program continues to be strong, bringing in military spouses as well as other underrepresented groups because of a strong workforce development program. And that program has proven very effective and we released the template for that to the industry. So if there's people out there that wanna do what Salute did with data center technicians, they can do it with cyber technologists or any of the various swim lanes that get you into this industry. And we're encouraging and working with other companies that wanna use that model. No, absolutely. I mean, so, sorry, go on, Philip. Oh, well, I was just going to add to to what Lee was saying. Right, he mentioned Warsaw. Um, that's that's a bit new market for us where we're expanding greatly. So obviously leveraging Salute there. But again, Salute is global, right? It's it's military veterans from from all all countries around the world. The the, the framework that he's established to help veterans you know, migrate from the military into the uh, commercial sector is fantastic and it, and it can be applied anywhere. And so we leverage them in South America. In Europe, we have close to hundred salute people supporting our facilities across the region. And then obviously North America, but as we scale out, you know, we're, you know it's kind of hand in hand, both of our, our growth and their key to help us have that kind of operational uh, consistency that we have uh, established in our other data centers around the world. So that's why we have this kind of great symbiotic uh, partnership together. 
Yeah, Not I've never seen a more productive partnership in my whole career. And what we've expanded, and I think we've brought value to each other. That's just incredible. I, there'll be a case study at HBR about this someday. <laughs> Send it over when it's out. But uh, I mean, I said it last time and I'll say it again. I mean, what you've been doing with veterans and uh, all the other work that you're doing as well, it's very important. Um, and you two are mirroring what's happening in the market. Um, and even when the interview came out last time, I did have some interesting reactions from people that are not in the data center space um, asking, what is this? How is this working? So kind of be like, oh, how can we kind of transfer this model to other industries, other verticals in the world, um, other than just digital infrastructure? So it's, it's very, very important what you're doing. But uh, I mean, Carrying on with the focus on people, because um, it's something that sometimes gets a bit overlooked um, outside of our expansion conversations, acquisitions, and um, capital investment. Um, there's a lot going on in diversity and inclusion, inclusion movement, uh, inclusion front, um, especially you guys as well at Edge Connects, Philip. Uh, tell us about the, the customers, people, and uh, planet mission that you've just launched. Yeah, I mean, you know, this, this comes from our CEO, and, and he says, look, it's simple. You focus on three things, our customers and giving them what they want, where they want, when they want, and making sure they're always satisfied with, you know, the, the best data center services possible. And our people, right? I mean, you know, like you said, Zhao, we, we always talk about technologies and, and, you know, various widgets and cooling and this, that, and the other, right? Absolutely, that's important. But the most important assets are the people that are running it, operating it, and making it happen, right? And so you got to take care of your people. You hire the best people and you take care of them. And then obviously the planet, right? That's that's table stakes. And you know, data center, you know, industry is is quite good overall to self-regulate. And we're always and we collaborate really well to try to, you know, I think we're quite efficient uh, as as much as we can be as possible. But we're always looking ways to improve and how to be greener, not just from a PUE perspective, but from a water perspective. And as well as from a people perspective, if you look at the UN Sustainability Index, it's something that we model ourselves upon and benchmark. But if you take care of those three things, you know, our CEO is like, hey, everything else will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. And so it ties into what we're doing with Salute, right? It's the right thing that, that, that we're doing. And it's, it's, it's a great way um, to kind of not only solve for the problem of having, you know, talented and skilled people to operate these data centers, but, but then, you know, it's, it's great to give them a kind of a second career. Um, and it's just a great anecdote, right? Um, there's another uh, initiative that, you know, I, I've started um, uh, with the infrastructure masons uh, called the Capstone Program. Um, you know, this industry is, is, is getting old, uh, like Lee and myself, uh, we're getting long in the tooth. And, and, um, but it's also a predominantly male, white male uh, um, uh, staffed uh, industry. And so we're, we're trying to help correct that, right? And one, a great way to get the young, the next generation of, of people into the space. Look, there isn't a degree that you can get in data centers, right? I don't, you don't, can't get an undergraduate in, in data center you know, infrastructure. And so we found a way to create a capstone program. It's a senior project. It's usually a year long or a semester long project. And we focused on the HBCUs. Now in the US that stands for historically black colleges and universities. And there's a, a consortium, it's called the Inclusive Engineering Consortium. It's like a super department of engineers across 18 different HBCUs. And we started last year with Hampton University. This year we've expanded it to four other universities um, where we, we take these young students, senior students, and they do everything from site selection to design, trying to figure out you know, um, where to build a center, data center, how many and so forth. So when they're done, they actually have the practical experience. I think it's like a year long apprenticeship or internship. We hired two of them last year, right? Uh, as engineers here at Edge Connects. And, and so we really look to scale that out um, and it was a collaborative effort. That's what's the great thing about iMasons. And I'm sorry, I'm spending so much time on this, but it's, it's, I'm so passionate and excited about it is because the iMasons has like everybody in the data center ecosystems involved and everybody wants to take part and help and share their specific expertise and so forth and recruit the students that go through this process. And so, um, you know, I'm really proud of what we started and, and the potential of where this can kind of go. And, you know, going full circle, we talk about India. 
same thing, right? As we scale this out globally in countries and markets like India or other emerging markets in Africa and so forth, you want to recruit local uh, students, local workforce from those countries and not try to import them from afar. So it's, it's, uh, it's definitely customer, people, and planet coming full circle. That's what's exciting. These next five years, you're going to see programs like what Philip and them are doing and what Salute is doing start to really scale globally and start to have the impact outside of the U.S. and noticeable impact. And we're doing that. And when you set up the programs like that to be able to get them trained up and familiarize, they can make a choice if they want a career in our industry, but we can make a choice, too, on which ones we want to select from that program. It's a great feeder system. No, I mean, it's been a very interesting change over the last five years to see these kind of programs starting to appear and the infrastructure makes have been a huge driver um, of that. So the analysis for those at home that don't know, Dean Nelson being the founder of Infrastructure Masons um, has been a big advocate of bringing young talents, 20 years old, be, bringing children to the data center if needed um, to, to really start preparing the next generation um, of data center professionals. Um, and you guys have been at the forefront of also supporting that. And I guess now it's really moving to the next gear um, of bringing the talent. Uh, and I remember speaking to Randy, um, Randy Brookman and also Jay Coomer, uh, when you guys went to India and you was already kind of, you was talking about this without saying the names of what the programs were. So it, it's good to see that such big movements as well, market movements are already considering um, these kind of important topics around staff and younger members of staff and preparing for the next generation. Um, but Philip, we, we talked about, you've already explained Capstone as well and, um, and Lee, you've also um, stepped in with the infrastructure medicine side and the diversity side. Um, but what's been like, the one big thing that has happened so far that you really you were surprised like an achievement something that you weren't expecting since the program has launched um and you're like oh okay i was i did not see this coming but this is awesome well you know just to kind of expand upon it it was it's 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 got this this uh inertia that we've we've developed of of people supporting this right uh the different companies um, and people from those companies, right? And from Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, and so forth, they've been, you know, they, they've listened to the students present their findings and so forth. And, and as they see the potential here, you know, you just hope that, you know, we, we've started small, we got that snowball going down the hill and we hope it just kind of continues to pick, pace, pick up the pace and so forth. And that, you know, we've also donated uh, to the scholarship fund, right? So I donate a lot of my time, but then we also back it with, with the money and so forth. And, and the, the feedback that I've got is so positive. Um, and, and people want to give both, both time and money to, to this effort. So, um, but you want to make sure that, that you do it right, right? That you don't get caught up and, and, and you make sure... Because at the end of the day, it's all about the students, right? And, and like Lee, it's, it's all about the veterans and, and trying to um, first and foremost, set them up for success. And so I, if, if you, know, you don't lose sight of, about that, it's not about me or Edge Connects or any of that kind of stuff. It's about those students and giving them the opportunity because they're the future. Um, and, and, but I think everybody's extremely excited and passionate about it as well. And they see it as a great, platform to to kind of assist and help and and like i said scale this out so um it's certainly rewarding it's been challenging during covid but maybe it's been a blessing because as we do this virtually um it almost makes it easier to kind of interface with the students uh, virtually and collaborate week in week out but uh but otherwise you know i i i'm just excited that you know we're in our second year and you can see the 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 potential of where this could go is is really uh, pleasing to me. I mean, uh, picking up on the um, on the potential, um, I want to talk what what's next for this because you you also have other initiatives that um, at Edge Connect. So your, your colleague um, Angela Kaplan launched uh, Women Connects. Um, yep. So there's a lot of things happening within the company within the business. Um, but what's what's next? Like, can you just give us a glimpse of what's going to happen over the next year, two years, if you want to? Yeah. Well, like I said, uh, you know, I hope to take this to some of the emerging markets like India, right? And and Adani has such a huge name and resource. And, and as we kind of build out the kind of digital infrastructure kind of ecosystem of people, 
um, in, in these countries, um, you know, that will be great and, and develop this curriculum so that there is not just a capstone program, but universities actually start to offer a digital infrastructure degree. That would be awesome. Right. And so from, you know, universities abroad and, and, and so forth, that would be pretty cool to, uh, to kind of develop going forward. Dobby, we've had a few glimpses of what that could be like uh, with some universities in the UK and some in the US, but nothing has really exploded yet. So it'd be nice to see that um, differentiation coming into the, the, the curriculum. Uh, and Lee, I mean, we've talked about diversity in people and we've mentioned veterans and now let's really talk about the veterans. Um, I mean, your story, the company's story, it's very, very interesting. It's very moving. Uh, and what you're doing, as I said before, it's very important. Uh, but how do you kind of relate and balance um, the success and the track record of salutes uh, with the human, the human interest side of the, the, the story of what you're doing? Well, the way we could make anything happen, just like any other company, is to be a commercial success. So we needed to come to the market with a model that was proven. And we felt like the old traditional model of silos in your data center and overstaffing them needed to be shook up. And that's what we came with and sold to the market. And because we had the engine to deliver that platform, it starts way back with the recruiting and, re uh, and selection training and then getting them into positions to gain experience. And ultimately on the operations team, it gave us a chance to tie in both sides and get a sustainable program in place because the folks that we recruit and train don't show up on site the next day. There's weeks and months of training that go into it, then months and years of mentoring, and then they get onto the operations teams. And to have that kind of supply chain in place and to partner up with great companies like Edge Connects gives us the ability to keep that on a sustainable basis because as they grow in their skills and move on into our client ranks, we have friends on the inside and we continue to backfill them and grow that service contract behind the scenes that nobody sees is that recruiting of veterans in that resource pool. And what we've hoped to do is educate the industry that the veterans that they were trying to recruit are awesome and they should keep recruiting them, but they were going after such a small slice. They were going just after the veterans that had similar skill sets that they could drop into jobs and immediately become available. But what we've seen is that every veteran has key skills that we need in this industry, the leadership and the discipline and the critical thinking. And if we can give them the technical skills and experience, they can choose whether they want to start a career in this industry or not. And we've seen them just accelerate through the ranks and all kinds of success stories of people coming to us, starting out cleaning data centers and moving up through the ranks to actually operate data centers. And they're great and heartfelt, but it's also producing that commercial engine to be able to fund it because it does come down to money and you have to fund these programs and the training initiatives. And that when people try to shortcut that, that's where they fall short. So that balance of commercial good and social good, I think is hard to achieve, but once you do, it's pretty dang cool. And it must be super rewarding as well. Yeah. Hey, John, I would just add two things to, to what Lee was saying. What's so great about their model, right? People focus on the the social good of of often of what salute does but it 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 wouldn't be so successful if he didn't have that kind of framework to train uh at the the veterans in various disciplines throughout the data center right and so that um often gets lost in terms of the 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 good part of the story but you you have to have that underlying underlying fundamental like uh, training and, and uh, converting uh, veterans into the data center industry, which is key. And, and a testament to that, and what's cool about Lee is that, you know, and, and he's very happy, we've hired many salute contractors to become permanent Edge Connects employees, right? And so, and, and I, I, I assume Lee, that's a good thing, right? Because that just allows you to continue, you know, the transition. And now these people are not just contractors, but permanent employees somewhere. And they have a career with a company like Edge Connects uh, kind of around the world. And that's the beauty of it. We see that as success and other service providers will try to get you contractually obligated where you can't hire their people, but you have to realize it's going to happen. So why not help and promote that and embrace it and give them an entire career path that's from the very day they start to the day they end. And if they end up being your partner on the client side, that's a beautiful thing because there's shared common goals and values that you had along the way. I mean, it's collaboration and taking care of other people as well. Uh, it's really the human capital coming into, into the forefront of the discussion. Um, and I like the, 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 the point of 
it's also not just about training these people and dumping them somewhere in a business somewhere around the world. It's also continuing the, this workforce development um, of continuing to, to get new skills, improving the skills they've got, prograding um, the person, if that makes any sense. Um, and I, I know, Lee, you're, you're a big advocate um, of workforce development. Uh, and it's been something you've also talked about um, a lot in the past uh, about please do not just hire, please also keep developing um, people. Um, I mean, do you think the market understands that now better or are you still having the same conversation that you were having a few years ago? A little. I think it's we're making progress. People are starting to understand it. You're seeing programs come up of other companies, much larger ones than us, that are getting good, strong workforce development programs in place because it does take an investment. But you can also partner for it the way we've done with our clients and split the burden of that, get that supply chain set up, and through that collaboration, do a lot of good as well. So we published a playbook to help people understand how we did this and, and see if they would replicate it because plagiarism is the highest form of compliment, but there's a lot of different doors to get into this industry. And we think of data center infrastructure because that's my background, but there's somebody that could start this for cyber technologists and providing people a step up through that door, uh, maybe DevOps, all kinds of different places, but there's always a beginning spot. And if they can start at the beginning and understand what market need they're gonna satisfy, I think they can set up a scheme that would do that. And if not, at least do it internally for what's important to you as a company. Hmm. And that's a mentorship is so important. Um, and just um, bringing back the infrastructure masons conversation um, again, uh, we spoke about mostly younger people the last time we we, talk, we touched upon it. Uh, but let's talk about because you've done a lot of work uh, around veterans with infrastructure masons as well, and I do think they've got a fund um, around this. If I'm correct me if I'm wrong, um, what work have you done with them, and how has it kind of um, speeded up the conversation around veterans? Uh, I mean, we know, so Philip, you've already mentioned as well, you've got quite a few people from um, from Leeds um, initiative into your business. Um, give us a, an overview of the, the journey with Infrastructure Masons around to work with veterans. It was about two and a half years ago, we did a strategic relationship with them where I came on to run the veterans program and build it. And we've made great progress. And it's a great uh, example of we can do at Salute and Edge Connects what we can do. But if we align ourselves with other professionals that have similar viewpoints and want to make a difference and make a change, a group like Infrastructure Masons is a no-brainer decision. So we aligned with them and started building this program. We have more than 200 people now in what we call the armed forces community where they go out, they work with the different transi transition sites, the military bases, the education centers to make them aware that we exist. A lot of times it's the uh, lack of awareness that there's so many job opportunities in data center infrastructure. So we're getting out to the military uh, kind of distribution centers, if you think of them that way, that are transitioning veterans and military spouses and getting them ready for the jobs after they get out of the military and letting them know we exist. And those who choose can have a path. They can get scholarships through our program. They can get access to training. There's free training available as well as access to the network. And you talk about a network. Uh, infrastructure Masons is the who's who of the data center infrastructure industry. And you can see that. And there's so many great success stories in that group in and of itself that are veterans. Uh, Eddie Shooter, one of the founders of Infrastructure Masons is a veteran. We're going to be publishing his story here soon. And there's so many others that want to contribute. And we can do that through a mechanism like Infrastructure Masons, uh, crowdsourcing, I guess. <laughs> um, that, that's interesting. I think the testimonials will be very, very interesting to watch as well, um, to hear more. Um, Phil, were you going to say something? Sorry. Well, I was just going to say, Lee, I think, you know, another great thing, and I touched on it a little bit earlier, and, and I don't know if you have the, the stats at, at, at your fingertips, but, you know, this isn't just the U.S. military. Your framework, you you have veterans that you obviously were a global business, but you're locally sourcing from different militaries around the world, uh, which is amazing, right, across Europe and South America and so forth. Exactly. You know, we're in 12 countries, but we've got 15 countries, militaries represented in our ranks. So we're attracting veterans outside. We've been working with a group called Euromil that represents almost 30 countries in the European and all the military unions there and looking to work with any organizations like that that can help us raise awareness that there's opportunities here. And then we can attract them, train them, develop them and get them into the industry. Hmm. Uh, Ali, if you're looking to say the next three to five years, um, I mean, are you planning to go into new markets? Are you going to expand the workforce? What, what's the plan for Salute 
Our plan has always been to embrace the client and wherever the client needs us, we'll be there. And very much like the military model, if we're used to train, deploy and support, that's how we've set up all of our processes. And I'm excited about countries that we're seeing start to take the expansion. India has a huge standing military, so they've got a lot of veterans that we could bring into this industry. And India is just like every other country. They've got a personnel shortage. We can help solve the personnel shortage in the industry globally with the veteran community in a lot of these countries. Some countries have very small militaries, but still, if you've got the workforce development program in place, not only can you hire military spouses, you can hire people from other groups and start them through that training process and get them into it, whether it's other industries or less represented groups in this industry. Yeah. It's a huge talent pool. I think, I mean, I think it was actually for social masons. They said there's about a hundred thousand people shortage um, in the data center space today or a year ago. Um, I mean, if I'm wrong, but if you just look at the veteran talent pool, for example, then if you bring the spouses and everyone else, then we could actually indeed, like you said, resolve um, the talent shortage that we have in our sector, um, at least until efficient intelligence comes in. And then we have another thing to talk about in 40 years time. <laughs> Not to brag, but I think this partnership with Edge Connects proves that you can solve the talent shortage. We've solved the talent shortage with a collaborative relationship where we take responsibility for one part, they for the next, and people can grow. And there is no personnel shortage unless you let it be a shortage. You can take advantage of it with programs like what we've done. It's almost becoming a self-inflicted thing if you're not taking steps to really address it sustainably. No, let, let me just ask this one very quickly, because last time we spoke, we spoke about maybe some stigma um, that some businesses and people might still have about hiring veterans. Have you seen that change, especially on the back of COVID? Because um, it, it has become hard sometimes to, to manage workforce with, with COVID going on and all this. So have people changed their perception in the last five months? There's been a lot of positive change uh, when COVID hit and there were lack of resources to get out to the data center sites. Who better than the military that's used to working in hazardous environments and wearing protective gear to have go to that site for you? And we dispatched, uh, got some very large projects because of that willingness and us understanding how to work the protocols and how to get through the government boundaries to be able to do the projects and such. So we showed that critical thinking, that ability to think globally, but act locally. Uh, it came through every time. And I think that established great positive momentum in that regard. Hmm. Okay. Um, Philip, when's the next acquisition? <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Um, is there, um, is, is yeah, there anything fine. that I didn't ask that you guys would like to answer? We would like yeah, to say? I know, yeah, I know you're always going to you want to get the scoop. Um, I'd like to know about the money side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, look, but I'm know, joking, but. We were, yeah, um, we were acquired, as you know, by uh, ourselves last year by EQT, and and that, you know, you know, being based out of Sweden, obviously uh, sustainability is a big thing, um, and so we're like-minded in that, and and so we continue to push out our uh, uh, sustainability efforts um, there. Um, we've been very aggressive uh, in terms of our expansions, as you as you've uh, I articulated earlier on. But this is going to continue, right? So expect a couple more of this year, uh, some organic, some inorganic, uh, some expansions and so forth. And so um, that's great having a partner like EQT. That was the whole rationale is to quickly scale up. And as Lee said, it's a bit of a trickle down, right, in terms of why we're, you know, demanding his global expansion and looking for him to support us in India and other markets in Asia um, is, is you're just you know, we're driven by our customers to, to further go uh, abroad, right? Um, you know, South America used to be, it was predominantly Brazil. So you're seeing Buenos Aires and Santiago and Bogota and Mexico City, all these markets are each getting their own kind of, you know, cloud infrastructure and more content and so forth. We talked about this before, Ja, like with the mm -hmm. pandemic, our homes have become the new edge, right? And so, to maintain that quality of service and quality of experience when we're working at home, studying at home, streaming at home, shopping, exercise, all these things are putting burdens on the network infrastructure as, as you need the data centers to help alleviate those, those bottlenecks. And that's really what's driving our customers demand for more markets uh, around the world. And so uh, you, it's just very busy times, but exciting to be in the data center space right now. Um, and continue to uh, kind of grow out and scale out. 
It, well, I mean, it's very, very interesting journey. I mean, I've been chasing you for that journey over the last four to five years. So it's been interesting to see the, the, the change um, and how well you've done, to be fair, because it's, it's been massive growth yeah. um, over the years. But uh, let me just pick up on the working from home um, point that Philip made. How is it shifting training um, all these people from, I would assume, in a physical location to doing it from home? We're definitely leveraging technology as much as we can because of the restrictions of COVID. When we do training sessions, we end up doing them virtually more often than not, where before we would do them face-to-face. -face. We've actually started operations virtually when the borders were closed in different places. And so we understand how to work virtually. It's just when it rubber meets the road and you need our guys on site, our guys are going to be on site. They won't be working from home because our job's at the data center. It's just the training and the program management and resourcing can be done remotely. So we do minimize who needs to go to the site, but when they need to go to the site, they're there and they follow all the protocols and we coordinate globally. Hmm. Okay. Um, last question. If you had to describe 2021 in one word, what word would you use on how, based on how things are going so far business-wise? Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> For the industry? Yeah, and your business especially. Oh, I just think it's outstanding. It's it's tickled me because we've done something that I think is very hard to do. We've achieved commercial success and social success and being able to do that starting from zero is pretty, pretty happy. Yeah. Philip. Look, I, I mirror that and just say, it's been exciting. I've been in the space a long time. Uh, and um, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's been a tough, year for many people and i'm very grateful to be in this industry um and i'm just excited about the growth that we've experienced and the the growth that we see in the in the pipeline so um you know it's been it's been busy um and i'm i'm it's been odd i haven't been on a plane in a year and a half but uh still it's it's uh you know we'll we'll get there some point but uh usually i see you some someplace around the world joe but uh, we've been doing yeah, i was on a plane last weekend sorry <laughs> yeah we've been doing these virtually and and we're still you know getting things done uh nevertheless so it's been good yeah, yeah it's been definitely interesting uh but look philip marangela lee kirby thank you so much for your time uh, and thank you our viewers as well for tuning into jsa tv and jsa podcasts don't forget to check out social social channels for more content mm -hmm.